if we dig a little deeper now, we're looking at the total kinetic energy of these two bodies. So if we were to look here, this blue line represents total kinetic energy. So uh, energy is a real neat way to see how things transfer and absorb motion. So this is the energy of motion. It's a nice way to see how the kinematics of motion flow through different segments of the body or how two bodies interact with each other. So this makes a really good way for you to analyze these two links together. So you could see a total kinetic energy is on the rise to the end. So the total kinetic energy of both bodies is presented there. Now, when you look at the proximal one, because we turned that proximal link on right away with torque, you could see that the total kinetic energy of the body and the, to and the kinetic energy of the proximal link are together. And then you can see here that the total kinetic energy goes above the proximal one as it starts to rise. So there's a separation here. Well, we know that we didn't turn the torque on on the golf club, the distal one, until here at 0.5 seconds. So this ne that negative angular velocity that we saw in the distal link, you can see, is sharing in what would be considered the total kinetic energy of the body. So you can see how these would add up. Now as this starts to increase at the distal link, you'll notice that there comes a point right here at about 0.8 where the proximal link starts to transfer its energy to the distal link to the point where the proximal link almost slowed down completely to the point of almost no energy and the distal link had just as much as the total. So the distal link comprised the total amount of kinetic energy. And then you can see from this point, you can see how these peaks match up. And then you can see when that link swung past, and I'll play it one more time, when that link swings past, a reabsorption of kinetic energy went into the proximal link, and that was transferred to it from the distal link. So it gives you an idea how complex this interaction is, but it also shows you that the speeding up and slowing down angularly in a swing uh, is more than just about um, ways that we try to torque it. Because in this simulation, we have a constant torque at the proximal link. And then once the distal link turns its torque on, that torque is constant the rest of the way. So now what you're looking at is you're looking at the total torque and work in the distal link, so of the club. And this will give you an idea of uh, a great way to see how the, uh, the golf swing works. And what you'll notice that we don't start torque in the distal golf club until 0.5. So there's no angular work up until this point right here. Now we notice that there is kinetic energy in the club earlier because that's from what was being done by the proximal link earlier. And then once the work starts to increase at the club at the distal link, you'll notice that there is an increase in the work and a sharp increase in the kinetic energy. Now even here when the kinetic energy starts to transfer back to the proximal link, which happens when you saw that thing whip around at the end, which you can watch uh, when I replay it, you'll notice that I am still doing a positive or this, this animation is still doing a positive torque and work at the distal link, yet it's transferring energy or back to a different link. So this interaction tells us a lot. Uh, if there's one thing I would want you to take from it is it's understanding how the effort of a golfer and what you feel is a real thing. Yet the phenomenon of how the golf club speeds up and slows down is important for you to understand so you can harness it during your motion. Well, this was probably a complicated subject, but I hope you enjoyed it. And our first uh, show of the season, the Torque Simulator, is now 
live to watch. Michael Jacobs, hope you enjoyed.